So I've been spreading these wood chips all morning. Spread a little bit last night and I went around to my fruit trees. As you can see, I got started early on picking up some trees. I've got uh, 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 right, right there an olive tree and all the blueberries and blackberries and and different things. I actually got a great deal on them, so I grabbed them up at a local nursery. Um, the goji berries I got planted back here along the house. Uh, I got some kale growing right there. Somebody gave us a hydrangea, so that's gonna provide some awesome blooms and flowers. Um, right back there is another olive tree. I'm gonna plant right there. Um, the nectarine tree I already spread a bunch of the wood chips around the nectarine tree that I had planted before that you saw. This one is planted in a hugel culture type fashion, so under that is about three feet of a hole that has a whole bunch of stuff, but obviously I got the herbs and everything planted around, guys. You just look. So that's about 20 yards of mulch that I'm spreading out. It should cover most of my front yard over here. Um, I'm hoping that it'll actually cover the whole front yard because I have another 20 yards on the way today, which is awesome. There's different ways that you can get wood chips. So I want to I want to talk about something really quick, and that is uh, the idea of planting a food forest. So I've got less than half an acre here, and I'm going to have 60 fruiting trees and hundreds of fruiting berries and understory crops that are just going to be awesome. I'm going to have annuals going right back here. You can see right there, there's a pipe that pipe right there right over that fence as soon as the sun comes up right there right over that fence starts getting really good sunlight so I'm gonna use that area right behind that fence right there um, is where I'm gonna have my aquaponic system going so I'm gonna get thousands of plants a year um, just off my towers and aquaponic system because uh, I'll be producing things all year round and I'll be, be, be growing fish. So uh, I'll be doing catfish primarily here in Alabama. It's a really good um, fish to do. Uh, they withstand cold temperatures. I don't have to worry about them in the, in the winter. They eat a lot less in the winter, but they're still producing, uh, you know, some nutrients and stuff like that. So it's really awesome. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, geolotin. Um, which Jeff Lawton, Geoff Lawton, however you want to say his name, super awesome guy, a descendant, I guess, uh, in knowledge from Bill Mollison, which is like the father of permaculture, and what he's doing is incredible, and he talks about um, planting a food forest on a fallen forest, so planting a forest on a fallen forest, so a forest grows on a fallen forest, and what he means by that is a nitrogen fixing soil building forest that falls will create a food forest so it's all stacked in time how he does everything he does layers of time so you know very short-lived nitrogen fixing plants to mid-lived nitrogen fixing plants to you know towering canopy uh, nitrogen fixing plants that start to die off over time as your other fruit production starts to go up. These nitrogen fixing trees and things start to go down. So that as that forest falls, the fruit producing one towers above it. So that's the whole idea is the soil creation plants that start to build that soil and that life underneath the ground give way to a new forest that then comes up and produces fruit. Unfortunately, I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> um, if I had more land, I would do something like that. But I've got less than half an acre. I've got maybe 0.4 uh, of an acre. So I don't, I don't, I've got uh, maybe a third, maybe a third of an acre. Okay. So that being said, I I just want to get things going, fruit production wise. I don't feel like I have the ability to create these, you know, time stacked variables. I do, but on a smaller scale, and I'm gonna show you that. I don't feel like I have the the 50 year or 
or 20 year or, or you know, whatever uh, longevity of being in a neighborhood. I mean, I've got neighbors right next door. It's not, I've got, you know, people around me. I don't feel like I have the ability to do it quite like that. So I'm going to do it on a smaller scale. I'm going to plant 60 fruiting trees. Amongst those 60 fruiting trees, I'm going to stack a bunch of mimosas. Mimosas grow really great. In fact, there's one over here in the forest across the street. Um, uh, kudzu grows really good here, which apparently is an amazing nitrogen fixer. And uh, it's extremely invasive here, so it'll just topple over uh, forest here. And so I'm going to go grab a bunch of that, kill it, compost it, and put it in uh, my forest, which is awesome. But this right here is a legume. This is a mimosa tree right here. So mimosas just readily grow everywhere here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stack those in here, and they grow like weeds here. They just grow so fast. And I'm going to cut and drop them. I'm going to cut and drop them. I'm going to cut and drop them. I'm going to create a bunch of pollard trees. Uh, with all the mimosas I'm gonna cut and drop the top and then every year it'll sprout up just like a crepe myrtle like I've got some crepe myrtles in the background over here and um, you can see they their tops they, they pollard every every year they come and just clip all the top off just completely down to the trunk and it grows up every year and you can use that that layer as mulch but I hate crepe myrtles because they don't fix nitrogen. They don't do anything good except look pretty. Well, I'm going to plant a whole bunch of elderberry plants back there. And I'm going to cut the tops off. And I'm going to plant some beans that can go up those trunks. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with all of the nitrogen fixing mimosas. I'm going to pollard those off. And I'll plant beans that can then trellis up the trunk. I'll plant tomatoes that can trellis up the trunk. And what that's going to do has allowed me to variously plant nitrogen fixing plants that have a decent lifespan. I mean, these mimosas, they live 20, 25 years and, and even longer, and uh, that's gonna fix and just build my soil on this property. It's gonna fix nitrogen. And so as those grow, start cutting those back, and the roots are going to die out. The, the leaves that I'm dropping on top are gonna start to go into the soil, but Here's the point. Why am I, so if, if I'm going to do that, why am I laying down wood chips? What are wood chips going to do for me? G.F. Lawton talks about a forest growing on a fallen forest. This is freshly wood chipped mulch right here. Well, semi-fresh. It's been breaking down a little bit over time. But they come and drop this. This is a fallen forest. This is woody material that has fallen and, they, and leaves, branches, twigs, big pieces of wood. I mean, all sorts of different kinds of wood, different trees, different leaves, nitrogen fixers, hard oaks, all sorts of different stuff. Pine, everything just meshed up into one. It literally is a fallen forest. So, I'm going to jump start this entire system by laying a foot, one foot thick across all my grass, my backyard, everywhere, every piece of land that I've got that's bare and showing, I'm gonna put a foot of a fallen forest on it so I can jumpstart this system and start producing food right away. Um, right over here, my nectarine tree is doing awesome. Uh, it may not look like it, but it is doing fantastic. Right here, there's a little tiny leaf. See that little tiny leaf? And it's like November, you know? It's got a little tiny leaf on it still. Uh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. It's just going to thrive next year. I know that because it hasn't died. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some pruning here in uh, January, make sure we got that all ready to go for awesome production next year. We're going to get some fruit on that little tree right there. Um, I got some pineapple guavos, I got goji berries, I got elderberries coming, my apple trees are going to be here, um, I got the olive trees, I got the, the blueberries and blackberries, I'm going to be getting some lingonberries, uh, strawberries, I'm going to plant this spring, I'm going to plant them all in the understory, 
and in the backyard I'm gonna have some meddlers up here um, some mayhaws in the back and all sorts of stuff we're gonna have a citrus hedge right here yes in Alabama northern Alabama we're gonna do citrus and we're gonna, you know we're gonna try it out and see how it works but guys you do it right you plant on a fallen forest you plant your food on a fallen forest or you create the fallen forest yourself just like Jeff Lawton talks about if I had more land I would do the time stacking with the fallen forest but I want to jump start this when I get ahead and because I have all this material readily available I'm just gonna use it it's gonna be somewhere anyways I might as well just throw it in my lawn and make it happen